I said, I said to him, he mentioned Shakur, and I said, I'm not paying him the money, you're paying him, Bob. And he went, wow, wow, wow. So, yeah. <laughs>
you know, it's all very nice having your logo on a backdrop, but are you prepared to stick your money and your balls on the line? The answer, as we saw, was no. So nothing personal. I mean, I like Devin and I'll try and help him and I'll work with him where I can. But at the end of the day, I'm not just going to lose money on a show when you're not with me. You know, and we may work together. I mean, I spoke to Devin Haney's lawyer the night before the purse bids. We wanted to make Liam Paro against Devin Haney in a unification. And I said, speak to WBC, come back to me, let me know. We'll talk to the zone about the biz. Never heard back from him. So, you know, I don't see why we should be obliged to bid. So, you know, and, and I don't think it's a bad fight for Devin, to be honest with you. But we will try and still make the Liam Paro fight. You had said previously that the input from the zone was part of the reason a bid hadn't been made from Matchroom. Devin and Ryan were outspoken in criticising Golden Boy alongside the zone for not having received payment for their fight. Did that have anything to do, you think, from the input from the zone of not being able to work with Devin again? No, definitely not. I, I, I think the zone would be more than happy to work with Devin again. But that fight was not of interest. So, you know, Paro against Devin Haney in Brisbane. You know, on a favourable time zone, I'm sure that one will be of interest, or it might be of interest, but no, nothing about, you know, I mean, the, the obligation on the um, on the contracts is the promoter to pay the fighters. And I, don't, I also do not believe in a million years that Golden Boy have not carried out their obligations to pay the fighters. But sometimes fighters have grand delusions of what a fight has generated and how much money they're going to get paid because sometimes they get bluffed and they get lied to on the potential of a fight commercially. Unfortunately, the commercial reality of Haney Garcia is nowhere near the deluded expectations of some people. And when they get their paycheck, even though I told them what their paycheck would probably be, and I was within five or 10% as always, they were told otherwise. And that is probably why they're not happy and they will continue to be not happy when they realise there actually ain't a lot left. At a press conference next week for the Wembley show, will we have another promotional video? They've gone down really well. No, no. Um, we don't know who we're fighting yet. That's the reality. We, we saw Zile Zhang doing a bit of filming for some promo that looked pretty yeah. high value. I mean, we want to fight Daniel Dubois for the World Heavyweight title. That's what we want to do. No contract agreed yet, other than an existing contract, but there's got to be some changes that, that he's, you know, we're talking to His Excellency and everybody about. We're working hard with His Excellency, with, with Frank Warren, with Spencer Brown, to build the card, get the main event. Of course, AJ headlining in Wembley would be, um, would be the one. But we'll see. That's what we're working towards. Hopefully it'll all get done and announced next Wednesday in London. Who's more likely to stay Zhang or Dubois? If it's for the World Heavyweight title, definitely Daniel Dubois. But even if it's for the interim, surely that would be the quickest route to a world title for AJ in a way because it's the next mandatory, do you not think? Not really. Mandatories, I mean, at that level, can take a year, can take, you know, so... Um, but, you know, you could fight Zile Zhang for the interim. You could fight Daniel Dubois for the interim. You, so, uh, you could fight, sorry, you could fight Joseph Parker for the interim WBO. You could fight Zile Zhang, you know, so... I'm not really that interested in interim world titles, so, but the, the, the IBF should on paper be available, but we'll see. And what was your reaction to Javonta versus uh, Frank Martin over the weekend? Uh, I haven't watched the fight, I saw the knockout. I think Javonta's a big star, very entertaining. I mean, he carried that whole promotion. He's changed quite a lot, really. I think he's become a lot more articulate. Um, I think he's become a lot more commercially savvy, even though he didn't turn up to the arrivals, which is never ideal. Um, but he's carrying the whole promotion himself, like there's no promoter. So he's having to do all the speaking, he's having to do all the entertaining, the interaction. Um, and he's, you know, he's got, he's very heavy handed. I hope that we can see him in some big fights, you know. I don't think he's, his resume can be so much better. And I think he has the ability to beat all of those guys, maybe. But I would love to see him fight Tiafimo, to fight Shakur, to fight Devin. I mean, that's, you know, he has a real opportunity to be a great, among his time, Lomachenko. I know he's old, but still a good fight, you know. Yeah, about that Lomachenko fight, how do you see that fight playing out? As that is the most likely fight that is about to get made. And do you think, like you said, does age play a factor in that fight? Definitely. Definitely. But Lomachenko is a very good fighter. Tank's just very heavy-handed. Yeah, I remember watching him win his first world title against Pedraza. And I was ringside, and you could see the power. I mean, back then he was down at... Featherweight or super featherweight or whatever it was, feather mate, I think. 
Um, and he's just very, very heavy-handed. And he's got a good, good ring IQ as well. So I think he's a big favourite to beat Lomachenko. But you know, Tank does lose rounds. If you look at all of those fights, you know, against Ryan Garcia, against Barrios, um, Isaac Cruz, Frank Martin, he, lost, he loses a lot of rounds. But he relies on his power and he, he finds a way. Yeah, and speaking about Shakur, obviously that's also a massive fight that people want to see Javonta versus Shakur. Shakur's last fight on his deal, supposedly, with top rank, going to free agency next. Have you had any conversations and are you looking to pick up Shakur after that last fight? I think, you know, as you've seen with the Devin stuff, obviously it has to suit you as well. If Shakur wants to pledge his future, then you make a significant investment. If it's a two, three fight deal, then he's going to be getting a lot of money and it's got to work for you as well. I think Shakur... He's pound for pound, one of the best fighters in the world. He may be unbeatable, maybe. He's that good. But I think he's been promoted terribly. And I think some of that is because Bob, when Bob knows a fighter's looking to leave, he just, he's out. Like, and this probably happened two or three fights ago because Bob would have looked to extend back then. Bob doesn't look to extend now with one fight to go because you've got no leverage to change the purses. So once he knew that Shakur wasn't going to extend... He's made his mind up. He's out. Oh, I'm not going to push him. So Shakur should be a massive star, but he's not. So that works for and against as well, in a sense that commercially, the money he's on, he's on a lot of money, a lot of money. For the revenue that he creates for the show, he's on a lot of money. But he hasn't been pushed to make him a commercial success. So I like him. I think he's a great fighter. I think it would be an incredible addition to the matchroom team. And if he's available, we will definitely be having a conversation. Whether it works for both of us, we'll have to see. Bob said, you said, uh, Bob, that you're not willing to pay. Would he pay in Shakur? Is that true? I said, I said to him, he mentioned Shakur. And I said, I'm not paying him the money you're paying him, Bob. And he went, wow. Well, well, well. So, yeah. <laughs>